You can only roll once I crack every bone in my body. <laughs> See if we can get this first try. Boom! First try! <laughs> first try? Hey everybody, welcome back to the server-side rendering with JavaScript Framework series. In the last episode, we built a server-side rendered app with Angular Universal. And in this video, we're going to take a look at that app, and we're going to profile it with the Chrome DevTools, and then also profile it with web page tests to get a real-world situation on a low-power device on a really poor network. So let's dive right down into the laptop. So here, I have a server-side rendered app and a non-server-side rendered app. I'm going to open up the DevTools for the non-server-side rendered app, and I'm going to make sure that I have the cache disabled. And then I'm going to do a refresh. And we can see we have all these assets being downloaded. And it says our load time is 272 milliseconds, which is pretty fast. But I'm on a really fast computer on a really fast network. So let's actually go up here and do some throttling. So I'm going to throttle to regular 2G, which will actually have us incur 300 milliseconds of latency per round trip. So you can see right here, the profile says 300 milliseconds of latency over a 250 kilobyte bandwidth. So now I'm going to go into performance. And this is where we can get a profile of how our app performs on page load. So I'm going to click this little refresh button. It's going to do a little bit of profiling. And then now it's done. And we can see that we have all these colored bars right here. And we also up here have some screenshots. And it's just a blue rectangle because we've only downloaded the HTML and CSS. And if we scroll all the way to the right, we can see it takes till about four seconds that we actually see something painted on the screen. So these colored bars right here tell us why this is. So we can see we start with the HTML. And that took 315 milliseconds to download. Then we download our styles, which took 370 milliseconds. But down here, we have all of this JavaScript. We have the inline bundle, the polyfills, the vendor bundle, which includes Angular and other libraries. And then we also have our main bundle. And you can see that the vendor bundle actually took 2.99 seconds to download. And it isn't until after all of this JavaScript is downloaded that we can go up here and make our network request for our data. And you can see that our fax.json call took 307 milliseconds. And then once that was done, we could finally render. So this right here is a big delay in the critical path, because our most important asset in this case is our JavaScript, since it does all the rendering. But because we have it set up in a way where our HTML and CSS doesn't paint anything meaningful, we have to wait for our JavaScript to finish downloading, parsing, and executing, then make an API call, and then finally render something. So this is not the best use of the critical path. So now I'm going to go into the server-side rendered app, and I'm going to do the 2G throttling and do a performance profile. So our app rendered in about one second. And that's because we had our HTML server-side rendered. But as you can see right down here, that our HTML rendered in about 300 milliseconds, our CSS in about 300 milliseconds, and then we were able to paint the page. And that's because all we need is HTML and CSS. But that doesn't mean we're out of the woods, because we still have to download, parse, and execute our JavaScript. And that happens all the way down here. And you can see, just like with the non-server-side rendered app, it still takes 2.99 seconds to download that bundle. So our app is not actually going to be interactive until this bundle downloads. So to get a good idea of when your app is interactive, I'm going to use a website called WebPageTest. So webpagetest.org is an amazing tool where you can profile your websites or other people's websites on real devices on a throttled network. Down here in Advanced Options, I'm going to make sure that I'm testing on a mobile 3G slow profile, which incurs 200 milliseconds of latency per round trip. And it gives us a bandwidth of 780 kilobytes a second. So I'm going to select that, put in my URL, and start the test. I'm going to go and open up a new tab. And I'm also going to profile the non-server-side rendered version under the same profile settings. 
So I'm going to wait for these tests to run. And now that I magically fast forward, we're going to look at the results. So the first one is the non-server side rendered app. You can see that right here, we have a couple of top level metrics. And so this is the median run. So the middle of the road of three test runs. So it says that the load time is two seconds. And the first byte came in in 0.9 seconds. And then we rendered shortly after in 1.2 seconds. But if we look over here, there is another number that's important. And that's first interactive. And it said that it took 3.2 seconds for this website to be first interactive, which is much higher than the actual load time. So if we go to the runs below, we can see we have about the same load times. So what we want to do is we'll go into the film strip view. So the film strip view allows us to get a play by play of what happened as your page loaded. We have this top part, which is the visual loading. And the bottom part is a timeline of the network requests and the rendering. So we can scroll through here and we can see that we actually don't see any rendering until 3.2 seconds. So I can actually can scroll back all the way to the beginning and we can play by play what happened. So it took about 765 milliseconds for the HTML to download. And we know that we need CSS as well before we can render. So it took about 264 milliseconds and then we painted something on the screen. And then now we're not out of the woods because we need to download our JavaScript. So all the JavaScript gets downloaded. And then once it's finished, it's now going to go and kick off a network request for our fax, which took about a second. And then now that the fax have finished downloading, it'll render. And then now at 3.2 seconds, we have our page rendered. So ideally, we wouldn't want to wait all the way to the end here to render our page. So even though our load time was listed at two seconds, it's really important to monitor the film strip and look at the first interactive. So now with server-side rendering, we're going to get a bit different of results. So this is a profile of the server-side rendered app. And you can see that its load time is actually about the same, if not a little slower here, at 2.1 seconds. And the first byte is about the same. The first render is about the same. But this first interactive is much, much lower at 2.1 seconds. And if we go down to all the runs below, we can see the first view, 2 seconds, 2.1, 2 2.1. It's all about the same. So now I'm going to click into the film strip view. And I'm going to make sure I'm at 0.1 seconds. And let's start from the beginning. So we're going to download the document, which took 740 milliseconds, which is similar to before. And then we're going to download the CSS, which takes 216 milliseconds, similar to before. But now, at 1.5 seconds, we have our content on the page. So the user has something to look at. So now we're going to go and download the JavaScript and execute it. You can see here at 2.1 seconds, the screen actually blanks out. And that's because at this point, the JavaScript has executed. And it's going to make a network request for the fax data. So it blanks it out. And it's going to create a new version of the app, which is a client-side version. So once it finishes downloading this fax.json down here at the bottom, it will then, at 3.4 seconds, render a new page. Now, out of the box, this is how Angular Universal behaves. And it's not what you want, because while you do have content for the user immediately, there's this big chunk of time where it's just blank again. And we can actually tell Angular Universal to not make this request. And we can tell it to use a cache version of the data. But that's a little time consuming. So if you're interested in learning how that works, just leave a comment and I'll make a follow up video. But if we had this problem fixed, you can see that we would have a page render much faster and we wouldn't need to make that extra network request. So our time to interactive would be much lower at 2.1 seconds. So with Angular Universal, we can get a much faster first render because we send down HTML and CSS first. And if we didn't have to make that extra network request, our time to interactive would be much faster because we wouldn't have to re-render the page. But if you want to see how that's done, like I said, just leave it in the comments and we'll make a follow-up video. So that's all for today. If you appreciated this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe for more updates in the server-side rendering with JavaScript Framework series because next time we're going to be taking on React. 
that's all, and I will see you all in the next video. Do you hear people talking? Okay, I hear people talking, but if you can't hear them, it's good. Okay.